All right, well, welcome everybody out there in streaming land. We're going to kick off with episode 11. Um, uh, where our party is, they've just returned from defeating the cultists and are hanging out in uh, Daggerford. All right. So as you summarized uh, before there, uh, Jerry, you're correct. Everybody's returned to Daggerford. Uh, you've talked to the city watch. And um, you guys are kind of licking your wounds, so to speak. Now, we didn't take many wounds. No, you guys did pretty well, actually. I'm upset that I got hung up on a, on a wall. Yeah, you became a, a fixture of art for a little while, that's true. And Bogner had to kneel or, or lay down in the middle of it all. Not that he wanted to, but... Well, that's one thing already. All right, yeah. so Back to the city watch, and did we go to the, see the captain again, or did we just kind of? Let's check to see. Nope, everything's cleared out, so I believe you don't have any quests or anything left to be awarded. So it looks like you guys have already spoken with him and, and gotten your pay. And um, I believe he thanked you profusely, and if I remember correctly. He, he said he would get some men up there to check out the the monastery um, ruins and add that to his uh, occasional sweeps to make sure nobody else, you know, uh, sets up shop there. So how far is that from Daggerford? Just from my like, in a, in how many days riding a horse? Mm, probably five-ish. You know, okay, maybe so maybe three, three and a half if you know where you're going. Right, but if they're making a sweep, and so it's a week-long sweep that they're making of the outlying areas. Yep. Gotcha. All right, is there anything that we needed to get identified or anything like that? I can't remember. Well, I don't know. Take a look. I'm trying to find that listing, but I can't figure out where it was. Notes? No. The party sheet. I got some. Yeah, you've got uh, your players' notes. Just say that you uh, took care of that. So we got this party inventory down here, these arrows that say Nadia and backpack and what's that part? Okay, so in the bottom right, that tells you what inventory is in all of the people in your party. So if you're looking for, hey, does anybody have pitons, right? You can go and it's alphabetical order. So you go down to the P's and you say, Yes. Oh, Nadia has 10. Bogner has 10. Right. Um, oh, Nadia has a pan flute. You know, maybe we need that for an instrument or whatever. Or potions of healing. Right. You can say, oh, well, it looks like Bogner's got Bogner. a greater. You know, okay. And then so I'm, it doesn't keep track of how many arrows I've used. No. Now, if you lose arrows and remove them from your inventory, it will do that. I haven't been removing them from my inventory because I was just been looking at it on my actions tab. That's fine. If that's how you're tracking it, that's okay. okay. Just need to know that once you're down 20, right, you can remove one of the arrow packs. Okay. Right. Yeah. Party coins does the same thing. It says uh, you've got just a little under 1,300 gold amongst all of you. And it kind of gives you a breakdown of who's got what. And then up above is the general 
the general parcels general. that haven't been distributed, haven't. and the general coins. Which is fine that we don't distribute that. That can all just hang out in Wagner's pouch until we decide what we need. Yeah, we'll just Thank consider you. those things, except for obviously the things that can't fit, like the horses, right? To they be can in, fit, um, they just may not last. Uh, no, they, they actually can't yes. fit into the bag of holding. I'm just messing with you. Uh, but yes, they would also die of asphyxiation after like 10 minutes or something. Or okay, so we've done all of our little stuff. We don't have anything to identify. I think it's time for us to head to the bar, Bogner. Sounds good to me. So we head to the local tavern where we can grab a room and drink to our heart's content, Jimmy. All right. Sounds like a good plan. Let you guys rest up and relax a little bit. The bar is a lively place this evening. Um, lots of people drinking and being rowdy, but uh, it's actually a good crowd. You know, no bad drunks starting fights or anything, surprisingly. We got Evander up doing his bardish thing. Let's see. Does he does he feel like singing tonight? Yeah, sure. He'll sing a tune. He feels pretty high in spirits after you guys did what you did. And he does a passable job. He's not getting showered in coins and roses, but... As long as he did a passable job, I'll... I'll, I'll... Reach over, grab Bogner's shoulder, goes, Hey, we know that dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he does well enough for the crowd. You know, it doesn't stun anybody, but, you know, uh, the occasional lady kind of bats his eyes, her eyes at him. And there's one dude in the corner that bats his eyes at Evander, too. <laughs> <and Evander too. laughs> but, uh, you know, he's just happy. Nobody's throwing beer. So it's a good day. All right. So we'll finish out the night with nothing else, you know, unless you have any random encounters. We'll finish out the night and retire. Well, at least that's what I'm going to do, unless Bogner has other ideas. I'm going to have another round. <laughs> All right. I said yeah, finish out the night. Stay. I didn't say that I was going to bed at that moment. Um, give me a uh, perception check, Bogner. Okay. Are you there as well, Nadia? Oh yeah. When I said I'm closing out the night, I'm just we're gonna go until we're ready, and then the night will be over. So yeah. Okay. Okay. Want me to do a perception check? Mm, no. You don't need to. Bogner got got the minimum needed. Uh, you notice uh, above the noise a pocket of noise over in the corner. And Bogner, you kind of your ears peek up and you look over. There's an arm wrestling match going on over there. Looks like people are exchanging wagers and stuff. So is uh, Dalen with us too? Yeah, you you're Dalen. You have Dalen's. You have the you have the com. So you get to decide, actually. Okay. So I'll, uh, most he may have been pious and gone to bed early. <laughs> Yeah, if you want to yeah, simplify uh, things, Tertius, he's he's definitely out. He's uh he's tired and he's contemplating all the 
all of his druidic stuff, he's just kind of come into uh, understanding. So we'll say that I have Tertius no, is no uh, there. I have no uh, no intention of druid Tertius having any part in an arm wrestling contest. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I'll, I'll uh, motion to the other others like what's going on over the corner. Okay. Um, it takes you quite a while to get a hold of uh, Evander's eyes because you know he's he's playing, but he just kind of shrugs his shoulders and keeps playing his his tune. How uh, high is the ceiling in this place? Um, let's see here. Take a look. Yeah, it's it's not really very high. It it might be uh, it might be ten feet, maybe, probably closer to nine in places. You know, because it's there's a reason why they call it the Crooked House Tavern. So, Bogner, are you going over to the uh, arm wrestling? Yeah, I'm going to pick up my drink and slowly walk over there. Is Daylin going to come along as well? No, if he doesn't get up, I'm going to push him over there. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Daylin, all reluctant, just kind of like, I just, I just want to be a wallflower. You know, you kind of hoist him and shove him along. Nadia follows you guys behind you, and then once we get over to where they're arm wrestling, just to see how many people she can freak out, she walks up the wall and to the ceiling and stands watching the arm wrestling from there. Okay. Uh, you do that, and some people give you some very weird looks. Um, and probably no sooner than you're you're finally at rest upside down, that uh, the barkeep comes out from behind the bar carrying a cudgel, uh, a cudgel, and uh, a bar uh, a bouncer comes in from the other side of the door, and he's got a cudgel, and uh, they just say, "Hey, get off my ceilings! Don't do any magic in here. This is a respectable tavern." Magic? What magic? Get off my ceilings, or get out. All right, so I'll move over to where I'm just standing on the wall. Uh, <laughs> feet on the floor or get out. Now Nadia rolls her eyes at the at the bar keys, but she's not ready to start a brawl yet. So I'll go ahead and put the feet on the floor for the time being. Okay. Let me see. What's your to do to do to do? Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Well, be on that way. It says, "Thank you. No trouble. Excellent." And he uh, grabs one of the wenches that walks by and says, "Get her a drink, whatever she wants, within reason. Nothing over." A silver and uh dumps his cudgel on his right shoulder and he goes behind the bar and the bouncer gives you another look and notices that Dalen and Bogner are also seemingly to be with you. Eyes the three of you and then he kind of turns around and he walks back. Alright, well I'll order my drink. What's up to a silver? What do I get? No, oh, there's there's wines. There's a couple uh, well spirits. You know that'll that'll be a silver for a whole draft. You know, yeah, you might as well go big because uh, just you know there are ales, just like you know, a couple coppers. So I'll go big. Okay. So they'll bring out a. And I'll give I'll give Bogner a wink. 
Hey, look what I got. <laughs> I'm under my breath a little bit. Okay, and just as uh, as that kind of calms down, you hear the big hooray! Ah! As evidently the the most recent match just finished, and uh, money starts exchanging hands, and and the loser kind of you know gets up and nods at the victor and kind of rubs his his wrist and his forearm and kind of grabs a beer from one of his buddies and. You know, gets gets a load of shit from them as they go off and sit at a table. And uh, you know, this this little gnome turns around from walks out from the other side of the table. You hadn't you didn't even see this this guy because he's so small. Walks around the other side of the table and says, "All right, who's next? Who's taking on my challenge? Are my uh, champions?" And kind of looks at Dalen, who's still in his armor, and says. You look like you're a pretty stout fella. You want to take a go? Ten gold. Ten gold minimum wager. So, if we didn't see the gnome before, then what do those champions look like? At least the one that was at the table. Oh, I'm glad you asked. So, the one that you know of that's currently sitting at the table is human. Um, big boy. So, he looks he looks pretty stout. Um, but he looks to be in, uh, workman's clothes, maybe, a a blacksmithy or, um, maybe a miner of some kind. So he definitely looks like he's, he's used to, uh, some hard labor. Nadia grins and I mean we just we just got paid so we we made a big we made a big payday with that chest that we found and we're able to open. Nadia grins and goes, "I'm in." <laughs> excellent, excellent. What's your wager? You said ten gold minimum. I've got the, my ten gold minimum. Okay, okay, ten gold it is. Step right up, or well, I guess sit down. <laughs> And he holds his hand out when you uh, take a seat. And, uh, I'll throw him the ten. Well, I'll right. look to Bogner. He's got all of our stuff. Pay the man, Bogner. All right, you fish ten gold out. Yeah, I'll remove through my. Uh, all right. I'll remove it anything. from the party sheet, so it's already out. Okay. It says okay. Yeah, if you win. You get your gold and ten more. If you lose, well, you're out ten gold. And uh, the guy in front of you says, I'm Tondi. Good to meet y'all. Nadia. Charmed, I'm sure. No magic. Just no magic. Forms. Okay. So we'll go ahead and right arm to right arm, right? Yep, you're gonna lock up, and you can see that uh, that this table is definitely used for one thing only, because on the edges of both sides are well-worn marks where people have been gripping uh, the edges of the table to try to help gain them some leverage, and you can see where the you know greasy, dirty elbows have kind of ground into the tabletops, and uh, you being the very cleanly, fastidious type of individual you are, and you're you kind of, you know, grimace just a little bit as you set your elbow down into this permanently She's stained She's not that cleanly and woodwork. fastidious. She was raised by wolves. Well, it says as fastidious clean when possible. Oh, but yes, with little care of she, okay. she was raised by wolves, so. All right. So I guess in your mind, you're just like, well, I'll have to clean this later, but here goes. So as we go ahead and, you know, I'm, we go ahead and what? Grip arms, right? up. Grip hands at the top right there, right? Getting mm -hmm. ready? All right. Well, as, you know, when once they once they say start, Nadia's going to go ahead and grab the top of her, her tunic, and she's going to pull it down to expose a breast to see what happens to this dude. <laughs> okay. Um, roll, roll me a... Uh... Let's see. Is that an athletics check? <laughs> no. Uh, 
Roll, uh, performance. I, I can't. Roll me a performance check. Let's see. Let's see how much you flash them or how well you show yourself off. Okay. All right. Um, he basically gives you a look and says, nice tits. <laughs> kind of rolls his shoulders a little bit and he you know, grips his side of the table and settles in. All right, All right let's go. It was right. supposed to be while we were like starting, but okay. Well, you know, it showing your breast to the table kind of makes him stop and kind of. Mm, mm, all right. <laughs> so you reset. Uh, let's start by uh, rolling me an athletics check. Oh, wow. All right. So. Little gnome says, "Go!" And your uh, almost supernatural speed just gets a jump. Tondi almost doesn't even recover. You you bring him over the top and past halfway down his side, and he is he is struggling almost instantly to uh, to keep his position. Go ahead and give me another uh, athletics roll. All right, Tandi growls and he grips the other side of the table and he heaves it back upright. Go ahead and give us another roll. I, I'll grin at him as I grab the table and do the same. Oh. He starts to grin at you as he brings, brings uh, both of your locked hands over the top down to his side. And so now you're just, just halfway down on, on uh, his side of the table. Go ahead and give it another roll. Oh, back and forth we go. You bring it back up to, to center. I'll start taunting him. <laughs> Can't beat a girl? All right, uh, intimidation. Give me an intimidation check. Oh, just don't roll a one. All right, his next roll is at disadvantage. <laughs> That's just funny as hell. All right, athletics check. <laughs> you bring it over the top, now you're halfway to your side. Let me see if he's still at disadvantage. Nope. He's recovered. Oh, you you oh, tricksy girl. Tricksy girl. <laughs> that reminds me of Grog. <laughs> All right. Another athletics check. No, me no oh, lose me to you, lose you skinny. You. Brr, oh, brings him back to, back, to back to the midpoint. So we're at mid, right? Yep. The people are cheering. Every time somebody goes one way or the other, the money changes hands like crazy. Um, a uh, a tall elf is uh, taking wagers on Tandi to win. Bogner, you can you can play side bets if you want. I'll give you an opportunity now that we've kind of gone back and forth a little, or you can just continue to watch. I'm just having too much fun watching. All right. Go ahead and get All another right, legs roll. Ah, oh. back over to you, Nadia. I'm gonna start talking to him again. What's wrong, girly man? All right. Go ahead. And give me an intimidation check. <laughs> All right, and succeeded. He's really sweating. Oh, and you do it. You succeed with the last little what's wrong, girly man. He's, his brow creases, and he's like, Whoa! and you were able to 
bring it home and bring his hand down, at which point everybody's like, hey, wow. And the gnome's like, oh my goodness. I, I mean, uh, good job. And he hands you your 10 gold plus 10 more. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and I will update the party sheet. Nadia stands up and raises her arms. Who's next? <laughs> Tondi's all, no fair, I was tired from the other three. And he gets up and kind of muscles the way out. And, you know, some people are laughing at him. Some people are patting him on the back. You know, he's got a couple buddies over in the corner that look pretty much like he does, big and burly and sweaty, but they got some beers for him. But he already made some money for the night, so, you know, he's feeling okay. So you call out, you know, who's next, and um, you hear a... I and hear Wagner a, steps up. <laughs> maybe. No, not yet. Okay, you, you hear a, a, a deep but feminine voice. Oh, I think I'll give it a go. That's all I can do for a deep feminine voice, so you have to live with it. And uh, you turn over, and uh, there's a, a female half orc. Kind of sits up, you know. When when she was sitting down, she kind of looked like a just a below medium height person, you know. But then she stands up, and you know this. She's she's tall. She's at least on the higher end of six feet, six seven, six eight. And she looks like she's got the the gumption for it. So give me a uh, constitution That's check, awesome. Nadia. Let's see if you've been... No, I'm going to grin good-naturedly and say, we've got a contest going on. Okay, a content, uh, constitution check or a just, constitution save? Just, just a check. Just a check. We're seeing if the... Ooh, Okay. All right, I'll tell you how that'll yeah, affect you here it. as we go. That was just my constitution, like rolling my constitution, right? Yep, yep. Okay. Just yep. seeing how uh, how good your endurance is for this contest, since you just finished a previous one that went on pretty pretty long, actually. Uh, it was enjoyable. I thought it was funny as hell. So she sits down, but she's like, "I'm in it for fifty or nothing. You up for that?" Lady, I are up and down, Mo mostly up from your house. height. <laughs> oh, but she's sitting down again. Yeah, I, now, I, now I, you're I, almost eye to eye. You're a little bit taller than she is when she's sitting. That's she's true. Sitting. So, I, you know, I, I look over at Bogner, I go, Hey, Bog, what do you say? I just shrug and say, go for it. Nadia rolls her eyes and goes, oh, dwarves. <laughs> they don't get the clue. All right. So you sit down. All right. So I, I go, all right, I'm in. Keep in mind. We're gonna go ahead and after this, we're gonna run a we're gonna run a foot race to get my fifty gold back. I don't run for shit. I grin and nod. I know. She kind of smirks, you know. One of her tusks kind of raise up, almost touching her nose on one side. Right. So we've got this like camaraderie going on. I she knows that she's stronger than me, but she knows she can't. Can't beat my speed. Yeah. All right. I roll my eyes and let's get this done. Because right. I'm not one to walk away from a fight. So the betting goes on. Um, and and you, you'll you notice this is obvious. I mean, you're right in the thick of it. So there's a lot of side betting. And it seems to be heavily in favor of this half-work woman. 
No doubt. Which, yeah, she's like two of you. So, yeah, it's not too big of a surprise, right? I'm okay. a slender reed compared to her. <laughs> yes, she, yes, you are. She's probably swung clubs as big as you are. Okay. Well, the gnome takes your uh, two respective coin pouches. I mean, for 50 gold, you don't just throw stacks out there. And uh, Tandy, or not Tandy, this is uh, your half work component or opponent, settles in and puts her arm out and she goes, You gonna show me your tits, lady? I ask her, Will it help my chances? <laughs> no. Nah. I just want to I know if want... you're going to try those tricks again. Besides, no, besides just looking bigger, for an advantage. So she smirks again. The same, you know, raised tusk as she smirks at you. Kind of settles in. So, Nadia, Nadia likes this chick already, so she's good. All right, well, let's, uh, as soon as you're wrapped up, she takes a, your opponent takes a deep breath and blows it out and then nods and the uh, gnome says, well, let's get it on. Go. Let's give us an athletics roll. Ouch. Yeah. Got a plus uh, eight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so she just kind of leans down just a little bit and just kind of brings it over the top. You, you're giving it a really good go, but she just seems just like, mm, this may not be very long. Go ahead and give another roll here. You, you battled back hard, gritting, pulling, straining. You bring it back up, and she's, she's got a little bit of a like a little surprised look, you know, and she kind of gives you just this slow, slow nod of respect. Like, whoa, little one's got something in her. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll give her just the Elvis slip. <laughs> a little, that little raised upper lip. All right. Give me another roll. Oh. Oh, ow. <laughs> so, so she doesn't win outright, but I mean, you're just right on the cusp of uh, of losing here. She just kind of brings it right over the top and says, as she's doing it, time to get serious, I guess. And now, unfortunately, you're at disadvantage because of your con roll. You are That's starting fine. to fatigue. I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll go. I'll uh, try to do the intimidation. I'll go, ready to give up yet? <laughs> give, give, give me a... Yeah. Give, give me Come an on, intimidation. Give me an intimidation at disadvantage. <laughs> Come on, that's funny. It is, and I'm going to give Nadia inspiration for that. Okay. Oh, I dropped the 17! All right, so we'll give you inspiration. And I'll explain that in a minute. <laughs> but she she chuckles, you know. <laughs> but then just says, that's not going to save you. All right, this may be it. Give me another roll at disadvantage. Oh, sorry. It's okay. Just roll it again. Do uh, you want me to do the disadvantage and just... Or no, just, just, just roll it one more time. Roll it one more time. So all right. So I just I'll just take the lower roll. So that's eleven. Yeah, the, the first one took a lot out of you. You know, maybe if you hadn't taken so long, you're thinking, Oh, I might have been able to stick in with this one. Um, but she taps you out, she brings your hand down, she says, That was pretty good. But I say I know. We'll talk about running later. It's too late for me to run. 
and everybody's, everybody's yelling, you know, a lot of people are like, ah, you know, a lot of money's changing, changing hands again, but it's not like even Steven, like there was some pretty good odds, um, that she was going to win. So it's, you know, like even money bets. Sometimes it was, you know, two to three kind of things or, or three to two. So they actually won, you know, less money than they bet, but they still won. So she's sitting there and she goes, I got time for one more in me. Somebody want to step up? What's the star next to my avatar now? So on the very tops of your character sheets, um, there's that little INSP to the right with the little circle. And when I click on that, that allows you to do um, a couple different things. And let me... Um, bring this up here. Da, 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 da. So, so, inspiration. Um, you can use this at any time for a couple different things. So, if you make an attack roll, a saving throw, or an ability check, you can spend your inspiration to give yourself advantage. Um, you can also reward. Um, another player. So let's say you can use your inspiration for somebody else to get advantage on something that they are going to attempt as an attack or a save or an ability check. Okay. So I could save, so I have this. So like when, if Wagner goes ahead and chooses to do this with the half orc check, I can give him inspiration. Yep. And it'll, it'll, it lasts for one roll. Um, but yep, you could definitely do that. Okay. So she has time for one more bog. Are you are you up? Did Kevin I, I'll give it a shot. <laughs> uh, you gonna step up? We got our little our 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 dwarf guy. He kind of rolls up <laughs> from one side. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll vacate okay. my seat and give him a pat on the back and go. You got this. All right. So you you're basically looking at somebody who, when standing, is almost twice your height. Not quite, but almost. And sitting down, she's still taller than you sitting down. With you standing, then the gnome looks. He over should get a leverage arms. advantage. His arms are shorter. You ever tried doing an arm wrestling contest with somebody with much shorter arms than you? Yeah, it's a little awkward, but she's yeah. the reigning champion, from what you can understand. So she she has a, a good way of working that out. But All right. you know, it's a valid thing to point out. Uh, the gnome looks at you and says. Um, you gonna need a booster seat. <laughs> Nadia eyes. Do you need to be in a race for my Warhammer? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Don't have to get mean about it. Jeez. Uh, she wants fifty gold. You in? Bye. All right. We, we 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 had a great payday. Did you already take the fifty loss from I mine, did. Jimmy? I did. Okay. All right, and I just deducted the fifty from your gold there. Okay. From okay. the overall group numbers, right? Correct. All right. Well, she looks you up and down. And um, you know you're you're obviously a dwarven. You're thicker, you fighter. You know you've you've got a look about you. She kind of you're not the slender of... reed that I was, is what he's saying. Yep. Yeah. She kind of goes, okay. This should be hopefully better than the other one. <clears throat> kind of takes a deep breath and huffs it out through her nose.
I look at Nadia and tell her I'm gonna need another round after this. Nadia Nadia indicates calls over the bar wench. Get my friend whatever he wants. And that was mostly just ignoring her huffing and puffing while I'm uh, talking to Nadia. Sure. Sure. That sounds good. Okay. So you guys ready? Lock hands. Gnome looks both of you. Both of you are pretty much kind of like, this is business kind of attitude. Not a lot of jockeying around. You just kind of set up. Link up and let's go ahead and get started. Give me an athletics roll. Okay, so you pull in and lock in and gain a little advantage right from the beginning. You know, it's not past halfway on your side, but it's it's definitely a third. You got yourself a good good bit of momentum. She kind of goes, and that's all you get out of her is a little, little grunt. Hi, Jan. <laughs> Intimidation. <laughs> um, sure, what the heck? Well, oh, the tie. Uh, yeah, I'll say, uh, yeah, no, nothing gained, nothing lost there. Pretty good. Okay. All right, give me another another athletics roll. You bring it down, kind of bring it down just past half. And then uh, she looks at you and she grins really, really wide. And uh, she says, uh, I'm going to rip your arm off. Give me a, uh, just a wisdom, I think just a straight wisdom check. Yeah, you pass, you succeed. You, you can see that it was really made more of a, a desperation attempt than uh, any serious play. Uh, she's not used to trying to, you know, use tactics and mind games and, uh, yeah, obviously, she's a little worried. All right. Give me another athletics check. I'll give Bogner my inspiration on this. Okay. Click on the ADV on the lower left of the box so you have advantage, okay. and then go ahead and make and your roll. roll. You're talking to... Yeah. Oh! <laughs> well, not sure it would have not saved sure you either way. I, try, I tried, Kev. So go ahead and uncheck that inspiration there in your character there, Nadia. And she growls and brings it back to not not halfway again, but she got it battled back to just a third on your side. So seven eighths. <laughs> sure. Or, uh, Sorry, I had or to 13, 16, out you know, what, uh, yeah, somewhere in there. Yeah, just, somewhere. just a different fraction. <laughs> That's right. All right. Um, she's all, all about the business now. You want to give another roll? <laughs> oh. <laughs> she just kind of leans into it and brings it down to halfway on her side. Told you I was done playing. I'm going to rip your arm off and eat it. So she's not trying to intimidate you, but she's just kind of making a matter of fact statement from her perspective. Yeah, I just kind of go and blow it off. <laughs> non, non diplom or whatever that term is. Right? I drop an right. ale in front of Bogner. Okay. 
So it's sitting on the I'm table. Kidding. I'm, ki- I'm kidding. I don't do that. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to smoke this going anywhere. <laughs> yeah, that that. I was just debating. I'm like, would that be a distraction? Okay. Um, all right. Well, let's let's roll this again. And see what happens. Yeah, her her just brute strength just gives her that little bit of advantage. Doesn't finish you off, but she's definitely passed halfway on her side. Yeah, I'll dig in as much as I can. All right. Give another roll here. Yeah, it's it's not enough. She f- brings it down and taps you out and finishes you off and says, Ugh, you actually had me worried there. Nicely done, man. And uh, she takes her purse and she actually she actually flips you a, a, a gold coin back. Buy yourself whatever you want. That was good. So I'll add you uh, one coin back to the 50 I just took off. <laughs> um, and she says, I, I'm done. That was good fun. That was tiring. So she stretches, and of course, everybody change, you know, money's whipping around the table again. This time it wasn't as heavily in favor of her, but still fairly one sided. And, um, you know, a couple people groan. And, uh, because they they thought they thought you were gonna win. You had her so close to the ropes. But uh, they get up and kind of disperse. The little gnomes like, any more takers? Any more takers? Come on, come on! But uh, it's pretty much done. Nobody else wants to arm wrestle. Where is my uh... Nadia? Calls the wench for Wagner's ale. And it it shows up, and in fact, um, she just was kind of staring and watching the whole thing, and she had a nail on her plate, her tray, and just kind of, eh, here, I'll get another one for that other fella, and hands you the ale, and uh, Nadia the ale, and then walks off to go deal with everybody else. I pound Bogner on the back and said, eh, the tough bitch, man. I next time we're gonna put Dale in front of her. Nadia's surprised that Dalen's actually still there. <laughs> yeah, he he almost looks looks almost uncomfortable with you know all the noise and whatnot, but. All right. Well, that seems like to be the the excitement for the evening. Avenger's kind of done playing. He uh, walks up and he's got two pints, one in each hand. And he's Nadia sitting, tries to he's steal like, one. He just kind of well, this is a mine. Singing's heavy, hefty work for the throat. Besides, didn't you win? You should have your own coin. I won, then I lost. Oh. Well, he drinks half of his half of one, and he says, "You want half?" <laughs> not he's not going to turn down a half a beer. Okay. So you take it and finish off your beers and. I think, did you guys uh, negotiate rooms here already? Well, we said we were staying the night and didn't think we did actually any negotiation. We're not going to worry about it. We'll say that you did. I just didn't know if you had paid up for some rooms before. We, well, we said we were going to hang out at the bar and grab rooms for the uh, evening at the tavern. They do. They have some rooms upstairs. 
and the rooms are pretty much just as off kilter and crooked as uh, as, as the whole Wagner building. Is. Whole build. Yeah, I mean, one room looks like a trapezoid, another looks like a rhombus. One looks like a triangle with a piece cut out of it. I mean, they're all just haphazardly thrown in. But the beds are good. The blankets are, you know, not threadbare. So all in all, you know, who cares that the room's all goofy shaped? Uh, you guys get some good sleep. All right. So we wake up in the morning and... uh there's nothing we're going to do. If nobody's going to search us out, nothing's going to happen. I'm assuming we're going to go back to uh, Dalen's estate. Well, surprisingly enough, you were readying yourselves to head back to Dalen's estate since he received his note and, and uh, he filled you in that uh, I think a, a housemaid was found and, and the old butler for the property was found. And yep. They've since returned to the property. I think we're still waiting for a major domo, though, a permanent major domo. Potentially. I'd have to, uh, let me see if I have any notes on that. I think we had the one guy that was, like, helping us with that, but I don't think we had a permanent one yet. Ah, uh, no. The notes say uh, that the chef and the butler, the butler's kind of the major domo. Um, okay. So the chef and the major butler had returned. And they're um, back at the household, kind of trying to negotiate or, or get everything settled. And and uh, the only thing that the missive said is that you you know you need some more mage, you need some handymen. You know, there's um, that uh, the rate for the uh, other family that needs access across your land to get to their mine was accepted. Um, that's new because we didn't know that that had been accepted. Yep. So it was accepted. Um, so you are uh, good from that, or uh, Dalen's good from that perspective. Um, but as you come down for breakfast and you're, you know, you're eating breakfast, uh, evening lodgings do come with uh, a free meal. And uh, in this case, uh, it's almost like the courtyard at Marriott. Kind of, yeah. But it's, you know, you get your choice of either breakfast or lunch or dinner. And since you were planning on leaving to head to Dalen's homestead, you know, you might as well get your free daily meal as breakfast. Um, there we go. Do, 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 do. When uh, a person walks in. I hate it when people walk in. Uh, a dwarf. A dwarf walks in and um, kind of looks around. You know, who's who's downstairs? Is everybody downstairs? All five of you? Uh, yeah, I mean, we're all thinking we're heading out. I, I'm, I'm guessing we're all downstairs unless somebody says otherwise. Evander yeah. is not downstairs. He is still sleeping. Okay. Um, so the dwarf goes to the bar, uh, the barkeep, they exchange some words and the barkeep points at you guys and you're feeling a sense of deja vu. You know, this is like what happened last time with the merchant. Uh, and so this guy then nods and heads over to you and, uh, introduces himself. This is, I hear that, um, you guys are the ones that handled some Bandit issues for the city watch. Um, my name is Gundren Rockseeker, and um, I would like to hire you guys to escort one of my merchant wagons to Vandalin. I'll just look over at Wagner since it's a dwarf that he's that's been talking to. I'm like, yeah, you probably have more. Uh, this kind of the guy shrug, you know, kind of that. You got more uh, pull than I will have with this guy. 
find out what he wants. So, do we have any idea where this is at on the map? So you guys are in Daggerford. Let's see. Do you need a... Um... Let me bring up a map here. Uh, I've got too many things set up for my indexes for me to find. I mean, I brought up the Daggerford area, but I'm not seeing the place where you were talking so, about. So, Fandolin is north. It's uh, towards Neverwinter and kind of off the beaten path a little bit. It's actually closer to, to Neverwinter than, uh, than Daggerford. Let me see. How many days travel? Uh, quite a f quite a few, probably a um, week and a half. But it's it's on the road. It's on the road. So you guys are south of the Mirror of the Dead Man. Let's uh, let's share that map for you. So what, what he explains to you is that um, he needs you to travel to Neverwinter. And uh, because his caravan's not here, and uh, it's at Neverwinter. And what he's trying to do is he's trying to um, find a lost dwarven mine. And, uh, you know, he's trying to bring all of his... Uh, not all of his possessions, but what he needs to uh, get up there and and try to uh, find this mine. And uh, the mine's, you know, uh, like Wave Echo Cave is kind of what it's called. But it's been lost, and uh, he's he's attempting to uh, reclaim it. But he needs his supplies, and he's heard that. Uh, you know, this uh, isn't the best of uh, times to be traveling to some of these outlying areas. He says, uh, I can't, can't pay you much, um, but, uh, you know, I think it would really, it would really help with the, um, my uh, peace of mind if you could help out and the the city watch seems to think everything's pretty well settled here so you know if anything oh. i i pay you some money before you move move on to neverwinter maybe there's you know something else there but i'd really appreciate it if you take this job so i'll pull wagner aside just say, you know, I'm good with taking the job, but, you know, a straight, just like, you know, straight payment, I don't think that's what we should do. Let's negotiate a, like a cut of whatever this guy is trying to find. Yeah, I was kind of thinking the same thing. Um, so I guess I'll, I'll ask him, like, what is, what is he expecting to find in his mind? I mean, what are they trying to get out of whatever he's trying to discover? Give me a um, give me a history check, Wagner, since you're a, a dwarf. Okay. Um, so you know just naturally yourself that that um, this mine's been lost you know dwarves and gnomes used to uh used to work the area um 
it was really more of a, a cave than a mine, but it was, you know, fairly rich in minerals, not metals. Um, and you re kind of recall some, well, you remember there's some other little thing about it, but, but you can't recall what that is at this time. And so the dwarf, you know, it basically gives you the same, same information. He's like, well, I, I think it's a, a gem mine. I don't, don't think it was metals. So we're expecting to find, you know, some gems. Um, you know, it's, it's no mithril hall or anything, but, uh, you know, for the area should make a fairly decent bit of coin for, uh, the right people willing to invest in the workers and in the infrastructure. All right, so I would at least know that knowledge before I asked him that, right? Yeah, yeah, you, you, you would have known that, absolutely. Okay, so I guess I'm going to ask Nadia do you want to try and just go for a straight cut, or do you want to try and take whatever small amount that he's getting, that he's offering ahead of time? So Nadia's going to say that I think we should start our bargain with the uh, with two different things. You know, we'll we'll protect him on his route. And that's that's a certain set amount of coin he's got to give us, but then. In addition, we're looking for a, a, you know, you know, once you once you've gotten there, we're looking like for a, you know, fifteen percent, um, windfall from this, so to speak, you know. So whatever you're pulling out of there, we're looking for fifteen percent because you know we guided you here, we we protected you here, and if you want us to stay on, we'll renegotiate at that point. Says fifteen percent. I'll be lucky to clear fifteen percent more for myself after expenses, and that's if I find the place. Yeah, he's willing to. He, he needs to give us a counter offer then. Mm. Um. Somebody give me a persuasion roll. Just one. Um. You looking at me, or are you looking at if 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 Nadia is the one that said fifteen percent, Nadia gives me the persuasion roll. No, I was doing everything through Bogner. I was telling him to go do. He he's dealing with his his own kinmen, his countrymen, so to speak. Okay. Um. I forgot to add my modifier to it, so that's why. It... Anyway, I says, um, look, I really can get any mercenary, but I'm here in Daggerford. I know you guys are dependable. You did a good job. I'll double my coin for you for the initial trip. If I need you while we're up there, hmm, we can talk. But seriously, 15%, like, I would hope to clear that after I pay all my expenses. I might, might do 1% of that. But got to get everything set up first. So we can talk once we get there and get everything working. So... Wagner, I'm assuming you and I are going off and conferring. Yeah. So double the uh, initial thing with a uh, contingency on if he wants us to hold out there. I, I'm good with that. So I guess I just want to clarify something here when I thought he was asking us to escort him from Neverwinter to 
some other place that I still can't see on the map, but not necessarily go looking for the actual mine itself. Is that what was going on, Jim, or what? Yep. Am I yep. That's what he's asking for. He's just asking for the escort. So I'm good with the double double for the escort. And that's to the town that's basically somewhere between Neverwinter and Leyland? Yeah. Vandalin's in that direction, if you can see my yellow Yeah, okay. There. Okay. Okay. He yeah, says, okay. well, travel up to Neverwinter. Uh, if you head out now, you'll be able to get there in you know, a week or so's time. And uh, he says, um, I'll take care of the the wagon if uh, if you need a, a wagon to get up there. And uh, then um, I'll either leave you word, and he leaves you the, the location of an inn, um, if I can't meet you myself. So he's not coming with us. Uh, nope, he's gonna. He doesn't need. Uh, he doesn't need you to help get him into Neverwinter. Evidently, he just needs you to help get his stuff from Neverwinter down to Fendelin. All right. Well, we'll travel to Neverwinter. Sure. Okay. Fair enough. We're going to go wake up Evander before we leave. <laughs> yeah, sure enough. Um, yeah, let me delete some window creep here. All right. So, yeah, he wakes up and you fill him in on what's going on. and He's good to go. He's kind of sung what he wants to sing in this town. So before we head out, though, was there any reason why we needed to go back to Dalen's uh, property before we go off on this? No, no big reason. I mean, other than just to help identify a couple things, Dalen can do that via, you know, letters if he wishes. Well, as long as that's sufficient to get the point across, then sure. All right, say that again. I just said as long as that's sufficient to get the point across to whatever he needs to accomplish at his property. That's yeah. fine. I mean, this is rural life. Things move slowly. You know, if nothing changes for a couple weeks, you know, nobody bats an eye kind of thing. Okay. All right. So you guys uh, make your way up to Neverwinter. Um, you find the uh, the inn, and you get in touch with um, the caravaner station with the wagon, and you guys are basically uh, set to go. Um, Surprisingly, uh, you don't, you know, what you have is, is a wagon full of uh, supplies, mining supplies and food. And uh, it's pulled by two oxen. Uh, but it uh, looks like you're going to have to, you're going to have to drive the wagon yourself. Is the uh, person that we negotiated with with us? Sorry, my wife was giving me an update on, on her dad. Okay. 
Uh, what'd you say there, uh, Nadia? Is the guy that we negotiated with with us? He is not. In fact, he has gone ahead. We never agreed to like drive the train. We were going to escort it. Well, there you go. It's a wagon by itself, and the the guild master says, I, I don't know about that. There's the wagon. I'll look over at Bogner. What do you think, my friend? How hard can it be? Well, do we want to do this or do we want to hold it hostage to, uh, you know, obviously he can't do anything without his supplies. Yeah, I mean, you got a note that said he's he's gone ahead to kind of settle everything in place and he'll meet you there. Yeah, Nadia's yeah, okay, yeah. but she's not a teamster. She's not, I mean, she's not the, uh, she's not the kind that sits there and drives the uh, wagon. So the, the guild master comes back out after, you know, a couple minutes that you guys are obviously still standing around looking, looking at these oxen that are just kind of, you know, you know, bawling in the, in the sun. And he's like, look, they're just oxes. You get on the board. You say, yeah, and they walk. You give them a little tug, and they stop. Easy, easy, easy. Turns around, he walks back in. So I'll, I'll give Wagner the lead here and say, I'm good for it. You know, Tertius can drive the damn oxen. I'm not driving the oxen. Tertius is, uh, yeah, he'll get up. He'll say, I love animals. In fact, uh, he exuberantly kind of flips the reins and goes, yeah. And sure enough, the oxen just, mm, and they just start plodding, taking a couple steps. Right, so he gives them a tug. He's way. like, oh, stop, stop, stop. And they stop. Seems pretty easy to take care of. It has nothing to do with that. It has the fact that we were not paid to lead an oxen team. All right, so Bogner, keep in mind that we were not paid to actually lead the team. We we're paid to, like, make sure the team gets there. Doesn't mean that we were supposed to transfer the cargo ourselves. We were, like, guards. Well, you want to try and hire someone else to run the wagon? And... No, no, we'll run the wagon. But when we get there, we're going to request additional compensation. Okay, I'm fine with that. So we'll have uh, Tertius run the wagon. The rest of us are kind of guarding it. Do we have any uh, other people that are guarding it? Or are we just taking the wagon ourselves? It's just you and the two oxen. Pretty sure that's not what we kind of like agreed to, but great. We'll take it from here. So we'll put the Dale line out in front, a few hundred yards, and I'll. Uh... It's actually probably better for you to be out in front um, okay, okay. and having me and Dale in range to the sides, mostly because the fact that you're probably going to be riding like a, a a slower horse. Nadia can run. Dalen's got his like one that he can cast in. Brownie. Okay. Here.
So there you go, Jimmy. We're on our way. I don't know where Evander is. We've got uh, Tertius guiding the cart. Nadia's range into the right. Dalen's range into the left. Bogner's out front. Well, if Evander's with us, I'm going to suggest he kind of hang towards the rear. At least for another thing. Well, I figured, I said I didn't know where he was at, but yeah. Okay, exactly. well, let's talk about marching order. So if you bring up the party sheet, there's a tab order. And I've just kind of tossed everybody out there in a loose discussion of what you guys were talking about. And you guys can move each other around if you want. Party sheet or combat tracker? Party sheet. Party sheet. I don't see anything. I've got the party sheet open. I don't see anything about our marching order. It's over on the right hand side, like underneath to the inventory, underneath to the clothes text. Yeah, it's not showing up for me. Yeah, uh, just order. So for the party sheet for me, there's, there's, I see parcel coins, parcel items, party coins, party inventory. Okay, all the way to the right, there's those little tabs. Oh, it's just okay. Yeah, it's not going down to the order. So yes, that's the kind of how we're how we're bringing the caravan that way. Okay, so Tertius is in the wagon and the rest of you are in horseback. Yep. Okay. All right, let's, uh, let's see, it's 1035, 1036, we're at, we're at the halfway point. Let's take a quick minute break for bio, grab drinks. I'm going to give my kids a quick kiss goodnight, and then we'll be back. So let's say less than five minutes. Sounds okay. good. Sure. All right.
I'm back. Who else is back? I'm back. Just sitting here eating pistachios. I think pistachios should be defined as their own food group. So, Jimmy, in the last tournament, my boy had two goals and assist during the tournament, which was a total of three of the five goals that were scored. Very nice. Yeah, he was so jacked up. I was more jacked up than he was, but he was jacked up. All right. Well, we'll say that you guys get started. I am trying to find All right, I'm back. All right, well, I'm trying to trying to find the map that I need, but I'm not finding it. All right, well, I will choose a different map then. Sorry, I thought I had found this once before, but evidently I had not.
Don't make me pull up the Benny Hill music again. Yeah. Not not quite a, as appropriate for this one, unfortunately. Ah, uh, there we go. Finally found it. Okay, I will sort these out later. All right, uh, I think we can take care of this. Um, you guys are traveling south from Neverwinter and you get to a couple days, a couple days of, you know, pretty casual t traveling. And as you get further and further out from Neverwinter, you know, the traffic gets to be a little, a little more sparse. Um, but um, as you have been traveling now and you make a turn onto uh, the Triboard Trail, which is right here. You've been on this trail for about a half day when you come around a bend and you spot two dead horses sprawled about 50 feet ahead of you blocking the path. Each has several black feathered arrows sticking out of it. The woods press close to the trail uh, with the steep embankment and dense thickets on either side. So we will put you out here. All right. So if you can size the map, you should be able to see the the dead horses. Can definitely see the dead horses. Uh, looks like there's cover to the left and the right, and then a track right down the middle. Yep. What do you guys wish to do? So Nadia will... Uh, jump off her horse and she's immediately going to head over to the uh, cover over here this region okay so you're just walking up there no not walking I mean we see the dead horses I'm getting off and I, I'm bolting over here I'm getting getting out of you and I'm trying to see what's going on with this situation. Okay. 
Um, so you want to, I guess you're looking around, so you can give me a perception check. Yeah, I'm going to basically stop where I'm at and kind of motion for Dalen to kind of head to the northern section of the trees. You can move Dalen where you need to move him. We haven't been locked into a distance thing yet. Yeah, I'll let you move um, five squares. Five squares. All right, so he'll dismount and move to here. All right. So, Nadia, as soon as you get up here, you notice there's some goblins up here. All right, do they see me or am I still cool? I don't know how I'd notice so ones over by Dalen, but I'm fine with that. <laughs> yeah, so this uh, hasn't been prepped. I haven't prepped this as I uh, should have. It was uh, kind of a pre-done module, pre so they haven't uh, set it for so there's two. I saw two on my side that I could have seen. You see this goblin right here, and he sees okay, you he's... looking at him, and I want everybody to roll initiative. Now, is he actually up in a, in a tree, or is he, like, by the base of the tree, or? Yeah, that's that's more of a largish bush, kind of like, you know, those trees that are, like, there may be a big bush, there may be a goofy tree. It's kind of like that. So he's kind of yeah, so kind of in the foliage. foliage. He's in the foliage, okay. And he's goblin four. Yep. Yep. All right. All right. So as you approach, you uh, you spot out, suss out the goblins, and um, and uh, nobody. They were definitely going to uh, try to ambush you. All right. So I'll I'll call out, which you know definitely reveals my location. But I'll, I'll call out, you know, ambush. Um, and uh, I'm going to try to close with this guy and uh, attack him. Okay. Well, we're... Um, we are top of the round. So, ah, wait, wait, it's not your turn yet. That's a quarter staff, a quarter. so you'd have to run up and whack him first. I was going to run up and whack him. He was Goblin 4, so Goblin 14's ahead of me. That's fine. Okay, so Goblin 14. Let he, him uh, do what he wants. He takes a short takes bow shot at Dalen. Any hits? And he moves down just a little bit. All right, Nadia. Well, I already did what I was going to do. So I ran in, I hit him with a quarter staff. Okay, well, move yourself on the map so I can see where you are. So I can see where you are. So I'm going to hit him with, I hit him and with you my hit, quarter step and already. You Go hit. ahead and roll damage. 
Okay. Then you bring one down instantly. Now, since I'm here, do I see any more? Uh, give me another perception check. Skills. You keep going back and forth between things. Nope, you don't see anybody else at the moment. Alright, because I don't see anybody else, I killed that guy. I still got movement, right? I only moved 20 feet to hit him. Yeah, you still got 25 feet of movement. You do know there's a goblin across the way, because you've heard the bow shot and... All right, I'm moving back here. I'm, I'm assuming this is a tree it is. that I just moved behind. And I'm moving behind the you know the trunk of that tree to make sure that I'm not going to get shot by anybody. Okay. Um, it's, a, it's not a thick trunk, but it'll give you some cover, sure. I'll put uh, anybody shooting from kind of this angle on you. We'll get a minus two. All right, well, Nadia is done then. Okay, pass your turn. And uh, sure enough, you see a, a goblin step out further down, and uh, he's going to take a shot at you. Uh, but he does have a minus, so. Oh, but even with the minus, he uh, he hits you. Wow. These goblins aren't messing around. Goblin seven. He comes down a little bit. And uh, he's going to take a bow attack against you, Bogner. And he misses. All right, Bogner, you're up. So before Bogner's up, I'm just going to make my editorial comment, and you can tell me to shut up. So Goblin 12 shot through one, two, three, four bushes and still was able to hit me. Yep. He got negative for partial cover. Yeah, that's not even partial cover. That's ridiculousness. It's okay. Go on. Bogner's turn. All right, well, I'm going to get off my horse and move up as far as I can. Okay, half movement to dismount. Um, we'll round up, so you got 15 feet of movement. All right, and I'll use one of my hand axes with strong axes to try and hit number 14. Okay. And that's, he's like underneath a tree that he's kind of stepped out from, so you can definitely do that. Okay. <clears throat> All right, Dalen. So does he have his full movement? Uh, did he dismount before? If he did, then he does. Yeah, he dismounted before he moved up. So yeah, he's got his full 30. Now, 
Now the uh, age-old question, which sword does he use? Been mostly using his non-fancy sword, so that's the one I'll use. Dull. Should have used the fancy sword. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> okay. Fancy sword screaming at you. No! Don't use me! All right, Tertius. What's Tertius going right. to do? What's Tertius going to do? Well, Tertius is up on the uh, cart, right? Yes. And I'm simplifying this, not putting a card in and all that stuff. But so that's fine. he's on a cart. He's on a cart. So I'm going to try to move up at least. So what's my full distance? My full distance is 30. So I'm going to try to get off the cart and move up to 15 feet. I mean, obviously, I need yep. to get off. Yep. And so then I'm going to go ahead and take an attack from there. Fair enough. And I am going to use my um, Produce Flame. All right. Make a target and then use the range to test Oh, I thought it. I did. Yeah, Goblin 14. Okay, so I'm good. So yeah, I hit him. Yeah, I'm trying to hold on here. Why'd you roll twice? I have no idea. Oh, you've That's got like Goblin that. 4 and 14. Did I have two people targeted? Yeah, somehow. All right. Yeah, somehow. I you hit both of them, so. I can untarget one of them if you want. All right, 14. We got you. Right, we squared your way. Go ahead and roll your damage. It looks like you hit both times, so go ahead and roll damage. Give him some fire. All right. Shoot some flame past Dalen and smack it right into the the goblin. All right. Have him complete his turn. I'll hop down and, and he'll come forward. Try to get a little better uh, advantage. And he will try to take a uh, bow shot. Actually, no. He's, uh, he's going to do what he was using really... Really, uh, I think, fairly well last time. Rather than a bow shot, he's going to use some uh, vicious mockery. You guys are attacking the wrong people. And it fails. And it drops. I didn't know that vicious mockery actually caused damage. Yeah, some, some psychic damage. Messes with their head. All right, Nadia, your turn. So that one, one goblin actually shot you. Pretty good shot, actually. All right. That was Goblin 12. It, it was, yes. It, it was, yes. I'm going to close with Goblin 12. All right. And I'm going to pull out my quarterstaff and smack the crap out of him. All right. Hopefully. Move her over there and then do the smacking. All 
All right. So as I move there, do I notice anybody else out here? Uh, you can give me another perception check. Not that you know of. All right. You got your, um, got your uh, bonus action if you want. Yeah, yeah, I will do my bonus action. And you hit. Yeah. All right. I moved 35 feet. So I still got another 10 feet I can move, right? Uh, yes, absolutely. I will move back. All right. Back into some foliage up there. All right. This goblin. Let's see how smart he is. Yeah, he's pretty smart. He is going to flee, and as he flees, uh, he's going to then stop and turn and take another bow shot. And he misses. Bogner. Yeah, I'll go ahead and move up here. Drag your token where you want to go. All right. Okay. And I'll say you're actually, based on where you are there, your uh, hand axe is kind of at, at your feet. It is a, It is an action to retrieve it from the ground. But uh, it's there if you want to get it next turn. I forget, how many hand axes I mean, do you have? He carries at least two. Yeah, it looks like yeah, two. I'll... Yeah, if it's in range, I'll just go ahead and pick it up. You'll use your action to pick it up off the ground? Yeah. Okay. All right, Dalen. He's got a lay on hands or something like that, doesn't he? Uh, he does. He can spend an action to use po five points of healing. He's got 15 available to him, so it's under his actions tab, kind of fourth down there, lay on hands. So you can. Yeah, well, the only person you can heal can... right now would be Nadia. Nobody well, he can heal himself. Can heal him. He hasn't taken damage, has he? Daylight? Yeah. He's yeah. Taken seven yeah. points. Yeah. Oh, I don't remember him getting hit. Okay. Yeah, he got hit by an arrow initially. Did he take an arrow in the knee? <laughs> if you want to. I don't remember to. that. So apparently, uh... I've been drinking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so all yeah, you so need to can, do, uh, Kevin, is can he, just... Well, can he move and then do that, or does he have... Is that he, he can do that and move. He can move and do that. There's there's no order. All right, let me go ahead and do one of those. So just click the little circle there. Yeah, just to, just to show that you've used one use of five uh, hit points, and then you can just left-click and drag that heel on top of the character on the map or on the combat tracker. And it'll automatically heal for five. The little... The plus sign. The plus I don't see a plus. Okay, there's a magnifying glass to the right of the lay on hands 
click that. Oh, okay. And then you can left click and drag. So you'd have to, so just by clicking it, because he's not targeting anything, it doesn't, it doesn't apply an effect. Um, so you can target yourself and do that, or you can just drag that um, on top of him and apply it. Or in this case, you can just drag that five from the chat window on top of Dalen, and then it'll apply it. There you go. Thank you. All right, so that was his action. Now you can move if you want. All right, Tertius. Tertius thinks about moving and determines he's going to stay with the cart. He is a little bit worried that maybe uh, we're being drawn off. So Tertius is going to stay here and be ready to cast a produce flame on whoever's ass approaches. All right. Avenger comes up, and he's going to target that goblin. And he's going to reach out with his hand crossbow and try to shoot it. How many hits? Hits it for five points. All right, Nadia. Nadia makes a mad break for this location over here and uh, targets Goblin Seven with her short bow. All righty. Hits. She smacks the fuck out of him. Indeed. Takes him right in the side. Right off his feet. Okay. You guys look around and uh, there are no other no other goblins about. Evander actually Evander. offers uh, you, Nadia, a, a potion of healing. He says, uh, "Where there's where there's goblins, there's usually more than one. So I don't I don't want to use any of my uh, spells just yet." So Nadi accepts, and she pulls the uh, bow out of her uh, bicep, or the uh, arrow out of her bicep, and then accepts the potion. Okay. Give me a 2d4 plus 2. So just pick up a, a d4 die, and with a left click and hold, right click one time to get right. two dice. And then you can roll that, and then we'll just add two to the result. Okay, I say that again. Okay. Okay. Four. So I don't think we've coded a healing potion in your stuff. We have not. So down in the modifier in the lower left, just do a mouse wheel on top of that block that says zero modifier. Mouse wheel up, and that'll put it at plus two. Where? So in the bottom left, where you see uh, ADV and DIS. Yes. So to the left of that, you're going to see a square block that says modifier, maybe. Yes. So just mouse wheel, hover over that and mouse wheel up two spots to make it a plus two. Okay, so hover and like click 
click on the left or click on the right. No, the hovering doesn't. Do you have well. a mouse wheel on your mouse? I do. So mouse wheel up while you're hovering over it. Oh, plus two. Yep. Yep. Okay. Got it. Now left click and hold on your D four, and then right click then one, right time. one time. Okay. And then go ahead and drop that in the chat and window. Go ahead and drop that in. All right. So. We'll give you six points of healing back. All right. All right. Well, the saddle bank bags are looted. And there's an empty leather map case. Are there any um, evident tracks leading off in any direction? Uh, give me an investigation check. Anybody who wants. Everybody can if you want. All right. All right, so you definitely um you definitely find a trail that um heads off. You know, you inspect the area and you find a hidden trail between some thickets on the north side of the road uh that heads to the northwest. Um you recognize since your check was really good um, that about a dozen goblins have come and gone along the trail and uh, you also see signs that two human sized bodies have been drug away from the ambush site um, you can easily pull the wagon off the road and kind of uh, hobble the oxen so they don't wander off if you uh, wish to pursue but uh, you definitely are, won't be able to take the uh, wagon with you. And this has taken you this a couple of minutes, and um, nothing else has attacked you. Well, I'll look at the rest of the party and be like, uh, are we going to let these fuckers, you know, you know, just attack us and have no uh, recourse, or are we going to go after them? Ah, here's a key piece that you really need to know. Gosh, they move this information all over the place, so I'm just going to continue to gripe a little about, about the order of this. Um, uh, you notice that um, one of the horses definitely belongs to uh, Gundren Rockseeker based on the uh, emblems on the saddle and, and the uh, emblems on uh, the letter that was left for you at the inn and and some of the markings on the wagon. And uh, who is Gundrum? Gundrin is the guy who hired you guys. Okay. Well, now we've seen that this is Gundrin. He's the dude that hired us. We haven't been paid yet. This looks like it may be one of his horses. I think we should go after this. What do you guys think? Yeah, but what are we going to do with the wagon? Well, we got all this kind of cover. I mean, I'm pretty sure that Gundren is going to value his life more than he's going to value the oxen. So let's uh, pull the oxen off the road. Let's, uh, you know, hobble them where we can. Get, hide the cart as well as we can. But, you know, if the cart gets hijacked or stolen by uh, highwaymen, 
eh, we haven't been paid yet, so let's go find Gundrum. All right. You can easily pull the wagon off to yeah, kind of a little, kind of a little you know, offshoot where there's a space for the wagon, the oxen. It's kind of even somewhat secluded from the main road. So it's not evident it should somebody just come by. So you feel reasonably comfortable with the situation. Well, and that's just my opinion. I don't, I don't, I mean, I'm not the necessarily, we, 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 we lead by a quorum. <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not the only decision maker. So I just want to make sure everybody else is good with that. Yeah, I'm fine with that. So where were you thinking we could put this card out, Jim, based on your description of that? Oh, you can you can find a place. No bit no worries. I'm not gonna try to make you, you know, try to find a place in the map. Uh, you're able to find find a place off the off the main road that's uh, behind some of these heavy thickets so it's not visible and and so we're like 90% assured that it won't be found but there's always that 10% chance that yeah, we're looking at somebody would have to actively be looking for it right okay okay all right yeah i'm willing to do that you said the tracks are going northwest yeah you you're pretty certain that there aren't any other goblins about here in the near vicinity they all seem to have been along the trail to the northwest. All right. Well, let's um, let's head out in our um, in our marching order. You know, we got Bogner out front. I mean, kind of like the party sheet shows on the uh, other tab. We have Bogner out front. We got Nadia ranging to the right, Dalen ranging to the left, Turdis in the middle, and Evander kind of bringing up the rear. Um, Nadia probably ranges out a little further than Dalen will, just because she's got the speed. But other than that, I think that's about the right. Uh, right, something like that, something loosely. Like that. I don't know. Nadia just disappeared from my uh, party sheet. Uh, she's so I have no idea where she went. Oh, there she is. Yep. Are you zoomed in? Uh, I'm zoomed all the way out. So I moved her to there and you can't so see her. I moved her to there and you can't see her. Nope, can't see her anymore. Now, if I actually am able, I can move, I can actually take and I can move the uh, map that direction, then I can see her. Oh, okay. But, um, oh, okay. But if I just look at the map by itself, I can't. All right. Well, and we'll so just we'll little, just move her back over there. Then. Okay. Okay. Right. But you you know what I'm saying there. She. I yeah. mean, she's got a further range than Dalen does, so she can kind of head out a little bit further. Okay. So you guys head along the 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 trail for about uh, ten minutes or so. Uh, Bogner, give me a uh, perception check, please. All right. Um, you see a snare trap, just kind of partially hidden, but uh, definitely in the middle of the trail. Um, easily avoidable. You can just walk around it. Yeah. Instead of walking around it, let's. Um, this will be a uh, Nadia, you know, and and Evander uh, trial where we try to disarm it because you know Nadia's under his tutelage try to learn how to use thieves tools and whatnot. Okay. Let's see. It's a training, it's a training exercise. Okay. So he says, all right, well, uh, investigate the trap, take a look at it. So give me an investigation roll. Oh, I gave it a tertius investigation roll. Sorry. There, there's my Nadia investigation roll. Still, still pretty good. Um, and uh, okay, he says uh, all right. Well, um, ah, yeah, you, you showed me uh, that issue. 
Since you're not proficient with the thieves tools, we'll have Evander roll, but we'll give him an advantage since you're helping. And he says, yeah, that was definitely a good eye by seeing what you uh, what you showed. And, you know, all we have to do is we can untie this from that branch and just hold the branch and that the branch is actually the counterweight and and uh, we can remove the counterweight and then this this little uh, peg here is the actual trip so it's useless now and uh, you guys have discerned so is there anything we can recover or does this help me in my overall quest to become proficient um it does I'm not it looking does. at it's gonna i mean if it decreases my time by a day, that's great. But, you know, I'm not looking for anything great. I just was curious. So as, as we proceed with this little uh, segment, then we'll, um, it'll probably, it'll definitely remove some of your time for spending on traps. But it's not going to be like, hey, one trap gives you a whole day of learning, right? It'll be more no, of a, no, as you it. help out. Sure. Okay. Sure. So we'll gotcha. keep... I'll, I'll, what I'll do is I'll have you keep track of how many days that you've, you know, quote unquote, spent working with traps and whatnot uh, as we go through th some things. But we'll 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 hit that at, at like every uh, story segment. Okay. Gotcha. All right. So you've encountered that trap and and took care of it. Uh, again, you guys proceed down the trail. Were we able to recover anything, or is it just kind of we just we're able to disarm it. Uh, I mean, if you want, you could probably, you know, 50 feet of rope, if you want some rope. No, that's not a big deal. I just wasn't sure. Yeah, if you want some, you know, crappy hemp rope, you could probably get some crappy hemp rope. Can we smoke it? Uh, I wouldn't advise it. All right, well, we're continuing on. All right, Bogner's still in the lead then? Yeah, we're yep. going to go with that marching party unless somebody else says otherwise. Okay. Uh, give me another perception check, Bogner. Okay. Uh, you're walking along, and uh, you hear a snap between your feet. Give me a dex roll. Dexterity saving throw, excuse me. Give me a dexterity saving throw. So on the right side of your main character sheet. Sure, as, it, as you hear the snap, you uh, quickly kind of lunge for the edge as uh, all these branches give way and fall down into this pit underneath you but you grab the side of the pit and pull yourself out and sure enough down below um you know you see about a, a 10 foot wall you know wouldn't be very hard to get out but you definitely would have taken some damage as you had fallen in uh, but it's just a pit so again now that you know that it's there it's easy to walk out walk around mm -hmm. Is there a map we're on, or is this just something we're... Nope, no map for this at the moment. All right. So, and we're still following this trail that we can kind of see these goblins went on. That's correct. All right. Oh, I'll look at Wagner oh. after he's pulled his short ass out of there and ah, I'm good to keep going. All right, let me uh, do something here. Our paychecks at the end of that uh, <laughs> at the end of this uh, you know, goblin train here. Yep. All right, I'm just uh, setting up the next map as you guys show up.
I would have loved to seen uh, that actual Bogner dropping into the pit, but grabbing on the edge happen. That'd be fun. The strain as he has to actually pull his armored body out of there. All right, so you have now come up to a stream. Let me uh, unmask a little bit more. And it looks like it goes into a cave. And the path that we've been following leads this direction, right? Leads right up into this cave. Okie doke. So as we pull up, you know, to this area, you know, I look at Bogner and say, do you, you want to keep leading or you want me to take the lead? Big open area as I figure it's his purview, but stealthy. Sneaky. Yeah, I mean, going to the cave is probably better for you to take the lead. <laughs> okay, right. so I'm going to assume that you guys are actually kind of back here a ways, right? You're not, since there's not a big approach to this map, I'll say that you guys are kind of really That's fine. back a bit. Yeah. So on our side, not there's there. really not much, there's not much cover other than uh, if I get up to close to the cliff edge. The other side has some cover, but you know, we approached on this side, and so there's really not much cover. How uh, how deep is the, uh, how quick and fast is the uh, strain going in here? Yeah, it's not very fast. It's, um, and it's actually flowing out of the cave. Gotcha. All right, so, um, you know, we, 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 we confer and we, we agree we need to keep going forward because it looks like these goblins went in there and they're, they got some hostages per se. Okay. Well, give me a stealth check. Give me a stealth check. You feel pretty stealthy. <laughs> just, just a bit. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to go up, you know, and I'm going to. How is it that we do two different direction moves? Uh, so you'll uh, drag your character to its first point, and then you'll left click on the end point that you just moved into. Oh, uh, well, you don't me... have you don't have movement there. on. So I lock yeah. tokens. So you can do that now, so and so you move them to that first so spot, and then you'll grab the, end, grab the and end and move it to the next spot. Move it to the next spot. Got it. Okay, give me so a perception check. I'm moving up to this corner, obviously as stealthy as I can, and I'm gonna be looking and listening as hard as I can. All right, so as you come around the corner here, you see in this thicket back here, um, a couple goblins. They do not see you. All right. I've only moved 35 feet so far, yep. so can I move yep. back? Uh, yes, you can move yes, back. Can move back. So I'll move back so that they can't see me, e e easily see me, and I'm gonna, you know, indicate to the party, hey, we got something going on over on this other side. So I want them to be quiet, basically, so that we can kind of group up and discuss it. Okay, so they're they're off a little bit. If they're going to come in, then we'll need each well, of them. I wasn't indicating they would come in. I'm just okay. like okay. kind of giving that hold, hold, don't, <laughs> don't, don't, don't rush in. Sure, sure. You know, open palm, stop, point to your eyes. I see two. You know, yeah, exactly. over there. That's, over there. That's kind of what I'm looking at. All right, fair enough. How tall is the stuff around them? 
Um, it's it's a pretty dense dense little thicket. Um, All right, so they're not gonna see us through it, or us. Through, well, you know, through so from what Nadia knows, they're they're actively trying to look. Um, so they're scouts or or guards, I guess, would be more accurate. So they're actually, you know, watch guards for the this entrance for this area. Um, but they didn't see Nadia when she approached, you know, trying to be stealthy. So, you know, the, the thicket does seem to provide some some difficulty to look through it. Well, I guess what I'm asking is, is, are they noticing us as we were walking up or not? No, that's what I was saying. You guys, everybody else in the party is kind of far enough back that I'm not going to consider them visible yet. Okay. That's I just don't have enough of a approach on the map, so that's why I just said Nadia is kind of scouting ahead, so everybody it's, else is kind of, is... you know, not right. really there. So if if there's no issue, I'm going to go ahead and move back to the party, tell them what I know. No issue. No so issue. Was I able to see no anything issue. around this corner at all? Was I able to see any more of the like the lay of the land around that? Uh, where the where the river is coming out um you you noticed uh let's see i'm just asking if you can clear whatever yeah just so that's just a little bit i just, mean mostly well, uh, uh once you saw that uh the goblins there they really kind of took most of your attention so you didn't get a real good look in into the inside nope that's perfect right there so i'll come back you know i'll, I'll let the group know hey what we got here is we got a cave entrance. We got a river that's coming or stream coming out of it. But, you know, over in this area off to our right, yeah, I know I saw two goblins. I don't, there may be more, have no idea, but they look like they were actively searching for, you know, intruders. And Jim, I'm assuming we can't like actually get through that thicket area directly. We would have to go around to be, uh, you know, so successfully. It would be and it would be difficult terrain, and you would most likely have disadvantage on trying to be trying stealthy. To be I mean, stealthy. it's a it's yeah, a tight it's ticket, a, a, a tight thicket. Gotcha. So I let the group know that hey. I mean, you can shoot bows through it. I can shoot bows through it, but I put uh, people I'd at three quarter cover. That, like, that should be a, like a quadruple disadvantage. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 like yeah, minus six to hit. It's like minus six to hit. So I I let the group know that we can probably gain the other bank and get up to about where I, look uh, where I just put my uh, token, Jimmy. Mm -hmm. I let them know that move my token so they can see it because i'm the only one that can see that right now i can see it yeah i think everybody okay. can see your plotted moves oh, okay gotcha so i'm I, I let them know that hey we can move up around here you know as long as we're kind of you know being careful and then beyond that though you know we got at least two opponents that i know of and maybe more Yeah, I'm in agreement to go take care of those two. After we do that, then I'm probably going to want to call it a night, though. Yeah, I was just going to say that uh, that's probably going to be where we're going to stop. Okay. So do we want to move all of our characters up to this, like, little area? Yeah, I'll go with you. All right, Nadia will be right at the right at the corner. Curtis is going to just stay on this side. He'll provide what cover he can, but he'll watch the uh, the mouth of the uh, stream, so to speak, as well. Okay, so explain to me, are you moving all together? Yeah, because I've already come back and I've told them what we've seen. So we all know what's go what, what's ahead. So, you know, I'm I'm going to lead the charge just because I'm the fastest person. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to be at that corner. 
Bogner should be right behind me. Dalen should be right on his heels. Tertius is staying on this other side, and he's going to be able to move out and kind of watch this, uh, the mouth of the uh, stream. And I have no idea what Evander is going to do. Okay. So you're just, you're just going to... Um... We're setting up, and then we're going to go in and take out the uh, Goblin 2 and 9. And anybody else that may be in there. Okay, let's see. All right, so the, the stream's two feet deep. Uh, it's not moving very fast. Uh, you can easily wade through it, so that's not a problem. Uh, but it does make some noise that allows you some, some assistance in your sneaking. All right, so you're just going to, sorry, you're just going to go just ahead and go. rush in, as a group? Well, we're setting up at the corner. Okay, so, so you're going to sneak up there first. Right, we're going to set up as close as we possibly can. So Nadi is right at the edge of where she thinks she can be before that she's going to be seen. Okay. Then um, every give, everybody give me a stealth check. And right, we'll do uh, an average for the party. So it comes down to, oh, why did he roll two? Uh, because he's in armor, so he gets a, a disadvantage based on his heavy armor. Same thing with Bogner. All right, that's fine. All right, so you guys get to here, and uh, as you're, as uh, Dalen and Bogner splash through the through the uh, little stream, um, the goblins definitely hear you. And uh, since yeah, three of the five of you did worse than their passive perception, um, they turn and we begin. Uh, a quick combat. Okay. Uh, so I'm not going to have anybody. We'll keep our same initiatives if you guys are good with that. And um, Nadia, you get first uh, first action. I'm going to move out here, and I'm going to go ahead and try to attack him with my short bow. Okay. You're just outside of melee range, so you're, so you're no disadvantage, no to, disadvantage that. to that. Oh, I didn't target anybody. Um, I'm targeting Gar Goblin 9. Okay, so we just drag that over, and you miss. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, okay. And then I'm going to just, I'm going to, I'm going to drop back over into this corner. Trying to draw them out. Okay. Then end your turn, and then it'll be Bogner's turn. So Bogner, it's all about whether you want to try to rush in or you, you want to pull back and make them come out to us. I'm gonna go ahead and drop them. You can probably close the whole gap with them. Oh, you can. Oh, you can. So just grab the at the end of your line there. There you go. We'll actually put you there kind of in the middle of the squares. And uh, you're in melee with either one. You can target either one. All right, cool. Go ahead and roll your uh, hammer attack.
Right, you hit. Give him a pretty good crushing blow to the chest, but he coughs, but doesn't quite go down. Goblin 2. Uh, let's see. Uh, you're pretty much between him and, and his escape route. So he'll uh, he'll bring his scimitar to bear. Uh, but he misses. Uh, this guy, he's going to use his bonus action to uh, disengage. And he's going to actually splash up into there. Uh, and so then does Bogner get a uh, nope. of opportunity? Because nope. he has a disengage ability. Disengage allow, does not allow uh, allow. attacks of opportunity. Okay. Yep. Uh, so let's see. He was going to bring a short bow to Bogner, but let's see. We got. As he runs by, he kind of sees everybody except Nadia where he ended up. Nadia, Nadia yells out, kick his ass, sea bass, as he runs that back. <laughs> I don't know. That's just a uh, dumb and dumber quote that for some reasons jumped into my mind. Right. Uh, no, it's, I guess his best, yeah, his best shot there is Dalen. So he brings his short bow around and he'll take a shot at Dalen. And he misses. Dalen. He just shot your, an arrow at your ass. You going to let that go? No. <laughs> Close ground. Again, the question fancy or not fancy? Well, the not fancy didn't do so well last time, so fancy. <laughs> and I'll drag it over. Oh, and that hits. Hits. Woo! Fancy hits. Does pretty good, some pretty good slashing damage too. All right, doesn't lay him low, but definitely uh, lays some hurt on him. All right, done. All right, Tertius. Tertius is going to go ahead and kind of cross the stream so he can see both opponents. All right, splashy, splashy. And he's going to go ahead and do the produce flame. Right. Actually, against Goblin Nine. Yeah. Oh, let me look. I'm not sure I'm going to do that yet. Now I'm going to do the produce flame. That's fine. All right. Uh, Miss Flame Skrulls. Past both of their heads. Evander is going to come up here and uh, he's going to take a hand crossbow shot against Goblin 9 that was attempting to uh, flee. And he hits and brings it down. Nice hit. 
Good damage. All right, Nadia. Uh, Nadia, I'll go ahead and move in here. Uh, I'm not going to try to interfere with what Bogner's doing. Okay. So I'll just go okay. ahead and do a short bow attack again. Critical hit. Nice. Smack the fuck out of it. Takes it through the throat and brings it down. Sweet. I will try to get my arrows back, by the way. Yep, I'll let you... Let's see. Um, yeah, you can get them both, since they hit. Alright, I'll just unmark those then. Okay. And so that's what we'll do, is we'll, uh, we'll leave it here for the night. And Can we just search those guys real quick and make sure there's nothing that we need to know on them or they have any treasure? Sure. Uh, the short answer is they've got nothing. Stupid goblins. I mean, they've got uh, some very crude scimitars. They've got some crude short bows. They've got they each have a javelin, each. That's it. Let's give Dalen the javelins, because, you know, he's got javelins. Okay. okay. Then you can increase his, that, uh, his javelin count by two. Yeah, other than that, that sounds cool. We don't need to, we don't need to grab any of that shit. Okay, so we killed the goblin that was running for help. We killed the other one. We basically know this little uh, alcove here, and we see that there's a river coming out of this entryway. Yeah, more of a stream, yeah, but yeah. Stream. Mm -hmm. Other than that, we uh, we don't know anything else about going in through the uh, neck of this cave. Uh, that's, let's see, you've got some people with some 60-foot vision. Yeah, Nadia definitely has that. That's what you kind of see. Okay. It goes in and to the right for the water. Or it comes out from in and to the right, and then there's a little little path here and some stairs here leading up, and uh, you hear some some growling from that this way. That's by over the way. over the water. Yeah, I mean, just very uh, the occasional like growl, but you're not. It's not a constant. You know, rumble. It's like more like, uh, you know, dogs fighting over a bone or something. Every now and then, you hear a, rah, 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 you know, and then uh, you hear it again a couple seconds later. Okie doke. That's it. That's where we will call it for the evening. Sounds good. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, another. Part of our adventure for Dead Beginnings.